hey, 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 hey. I have a Twitter now, so if you like unpopular, controversial, and contrived opinions about how spinach is objectively better than lettuce because it doesn't taste like someone pissed on a sheet of notebook paper, then go ahead and follow me at TSF underscore Rusty. I'm a complete boomer when it comes to using Twitter or social media, so believe me, this is, uh, this is just as weird for me as it is for you. I think it's probably time for me to admit that I actually planned for this entire series to be just one giant list. If I could rifle through almost 50 bosses on the same video and somehow not accrue any complaints on the video length, then surely I could have treated a slightly smaller number the same way, right? I had the entire script drafted up and ready to go, and I sat in great contemplation for about a whole three minutes, deciding where each charm should be placed relative to one another based on its overall usefulness, enjoyment factor, and the amount of times where I actually felt as though they came in handy. And then, as per usual, I realize I've created too much work for myself to clear out in just a couple days, so the script just kinda sat there in the pipeline for like a week, just aging and rotting and slowly losing what little relevance a Hollow Knight charm tier list has in 2019 to begin with, because I got socked with literally everything else. BlizzCon coverage I did on TGN here in the past couple weeks, making sure I was correct in invoicing said coverage, working with editors working with writers, preparing holiday travels, life student loans, and a U.S. Constitution-sized laundry list of other shit I don't feel like explaining right now. That said, I've told you my opinion on exactly 20 charms, respectively being my 10 worst and my 10 best, and I've still got close to 5 pages of bad jokes and shit tier one-liners to squeeze some mileage out of here, so I might as well sack up and actually finish a series that I start for once, Rusty. So instead of something polarizing as per usual, let's go over some charms that Rusty has no opinion of whatsoever. They aren't good, they aren't bad, they're just... Uh, they aight. This shield may be strong, but nothing can protect me from crippling depression. Dream Shield is not a charm I've ever been fond of, but there are just too many players that think it viable for me to try and contend with every single opinion at once. I will admit that you can actually get some really good value out of it during more chaotic boss fights like Grey Prince Zote, or other bosses that summon lesser enemies to help out, like Traitor Lord or Lost Kin, for instance. It can be a nice failsafe if you get too overwhelmed with projectiles from multiple directions, but well, that's well, that's kind of the issue I have with it in the first place. It can can be your literal saving grace at times, but most of the time it, it just won't. The constant circular pattern in which the shield moves makes it difficult to intentionally block anything or deal damage with it at any given time, and it doesn't help that this thing tops out at the blinding breakneck speed of sloths fucking. I just like being in control of all of my character. So when I have this equipped, I feel like I'm being forced to play around it, which ironically can lead to really poor movements and getting hit by even more stuff. And when it does do something, it usually does something big. I can see why people like it, it's, it's just not for me. My therapist likes to tell me that coming out of my shell is a great way to cope with childhood trauma, to which I only respond, you've clearly never used the Baldur shell charm in Hollow Knight, and boy does it show. Alas, she just... She just refuses to understand. Like, have you ever just tried, you know, not taking damage? Let's be honest, that's probably the best advice you're gonna hear me give in this entire video. This charm seems to be just a crutch for players that haven't yet practiced the concept of not completely and helplessly shitting your pants full whenever a bug so much as coughs too loudly in your direction. Those who find themselves panic healing often might only use this charm as a reminder to, well, not do that. If caught by something while healing with the Baldur shell, smaller projectiles and weaker enemy attacks will ricochet off the surface. It slightly lessens the stakes when you make the big brain time error of trying to heal literally in the middle of someone else's attack animation, you ballsy fuck. Once again, a good crutch for newer players, but once you've grown comfortable with the controls for more than a few hours, that's it's not really a mistake you should be making anyways. So at that point, it's time to rip off those training wheels and get yourself a two-slot charm that's actually worth a damn. 
Just like my late uncle Frederick used to say, if Shape of Un is your favorite charm, then the first step to finding the problem is admitting that you have one. The Shape of Un is basically a really weird niche and poor man's version of the Quick Focus, with less application and usability. It's got its own uses, but the only real application for Shape of Un is when you need to make your own window to heal reliably, but you don't have enough room for Quick Focus in your build. The main function of Shape of Un is to give the player an easier window to heal by lessening the size of the knight's hitbox outline. You can heal while ducking under attacks, and certain projectiles like the red bats Grim throws at you for instance, and you can also move around a little while doing it, so you aren't completely helpless here. But it does cost one charm notch less than the aforementioned, so I guess expecting it to measure up to quick focus is kind of putting too much faith in this charm to begin with. If you have room for Shape of Un, then you probably have room for quick focus too, without making too big of a sacrifice. The greatest and arguably only highlightable feature about this charm is the fact that you get to turn into a slug for just for the the bragging rights I suppose Grub Song has always been a very middle-of-the-road charm for me. Its function and usefulness is pretty straightforward. Taking damage allows the player to accumulate more soul as comeuppance for taking said damage. And as far as single-slot charms go, this one is, like, it's, like, it's about as average as you can get. It pulls exactly its own weight and no one else's. It is perfectly average and flawlessly mundane. Grub Song offers exactly as much help as it sounds like it does and absolutely Absolutely nothing more than that. It's an average charm that offers an average perk for the completely average player, so I'd be in denial if I said I didn't recommend it for an average ass such as myself. It's a nice accessory for any build, but that doesn't mean there aren't nicer ones available to you, especially for single slot charms. It's the sort of charm that just kind of fits in anywhere, without really having a certain specialty. More soul means you can heal more often and be more aggressive, and it benefits spell builds because you can cast more frequently, but aside from that, it's, there's really nothing I can say about it. This charm comes with absolutely no fanfare. No minions, no spiders, no nail lengthening, no magic shields. It's not like you equip this charm and a, a fucking ancient obelisk just erects itself in your backyard and gives you the gift of immortality or some shit. It's, it's just Grub Song. That's the beginning and the end of it. Perfectly ordinary, not good or bad. It's just, it's Grub Song. And next up on my list is Soul Eater. It's a great charm with a great usability that would have made its way to my go-to list had it not been a little too overpriced for its function. The main reason why I never really spent a lot of time with this charm was just because by the time you discover it, there's a good chance you've already found another spell build that's really compatible with your playstyle. And here comes Mr. Four Door Ford Whore into the game and he wants everyone else to make some wiggle room for him to cannonball in, but this build can't really handle four extra notches of fat ass on top of it, so sadly this charm is gonna have to take the back seat. There aren't a lot of charms on here I'd be willing to commit four notches to regardless, and I think people forget how huge of an asking price that really is. But this is definitely one of the more useful four slot charms in the selection that seems to go past just being a niche pick for certain fights. But if you're going to dedicate four whole spaces to a single charm, you might as well ante up all the way at that point and just over charm yourself to hell. But I mean, if the riveting playstyle of standing in one spot and jacking off your B button and watching everything in the general direction you're facing just crumble to dust and rubble, then uh, maybe the Soul Leader is perfect for you. Thorns of Agony, on top of sounding like a twisted, cruel 15th century torture device, has a lot of room to perform well in melee builds, but it's really only for players that plan on taking damage. Granted, the damage burst this thing produces for it to be a single slot charm might just be a little on the OP side, but the good thing is it doesn't really scale with charms like Fury or Strength, so the extra damage teeters just on the edge of completely batshit ridiculous in my opinion without actually crossing that line. Thorns of Agony to me functions as a sort of reskinned and repurposed balder shell. And yeah, the functions may be completely different in comparison, but you're usually equipping these two for the exact same reason, i.e. you know whatever boss you're about to challenge is gonna 
to hand you your ass cheeks, and you definitely plan on taking some extra hits here and there. It performs extremely well against some particular bosses like Watcher Knights, because there are always going to be multiple targets on the screen at any given time for the thorns to hit. But going toe to toe with a boss like the Pure Vessel, for instance, it might warrant some more significant charms that strengthen your own playstyle. Thorns of Agony is very meh. I would rate it two and a half stars out of five if I could. There are certainly worse single slot charms than thorns, but uh, there are definitely much better ones too. The Dream Wielder Charm is the third single slot charm on this list, and despite the charm being placed on such an arbitrary position on my list, I actually really do think this is a great charm in its own right. It's not a huge necessity for any build to have, but that certainly doesn't mean it doesn't have a place. Your Dream Nail is usually meant for accessing dream battles and certain dialogue and stuff like that, and the Dream Wielder Charm essentially takes that ability and more or less weaponizes it by drastically reducing its charge time to the point where you can easily dream nail slower enemies in combat. As an added bonus, you can dream nail enemies to throttle your soul reserves if you're running low, and the dream wielder definitely helps make that a little easier. But that doesn't change the fact that you stand completely still when using it. So even though the wind up is much faster, it's still kind of inconvenient and awkward to use, especially with multiple enemies on the screen. The value you can get out of this thing in areas like the Colosseum of Fools, however, is just it, it's it's stupid. It's stupid massive. Because if you're low on soul, you can just kill every enemy except one on the screen to prevent the next wave from coming in, and then just shake down that bastard for everything he's worth. And next up, we have Sharp Shadow. I just want to go ahead and say I was super ultra mega close on actually putting this one on my favorite charms list. And if I were ranking the charms as a whole in one video, this would probably fall around like 13 or 14 or something. The extra damage is super nice, but the distance increase makes some platforming harder than it should be just because one side effect of Sharp Shadow is that your dashing distance with Shade Cloak is actually heightened just a bit. And that can really throw a wrench in things if you've spent the entire game being used to the base distance your Shadow Dash travels. This is good for those really niche builds that players only tend to build for style points, but Sharp Shadow may be better off unequipped when you're dealing with really precise platforming. I learned this lesson the hard way in the Queen's Gardens, because after having it equipped thinking the extra damage sounded nice, and it certainly is, I would try to dodge under a vine of thorns or something trying to get to another platform, and then just trebuchet myself straight past where I wanted and headbutt another wall of thorns immediately in front of it. It's definitely good for getting in some extra damage against bosses, but only if you're really comfortable with dodging and evading attacks. It's just too damn powerful, I say. Not even the knight can control it. You might as well be trying to walk your 1500 pound pet bison with a leash made of string cheese. If you aren't, then being overzealous and trying to take advantage of the charm's extra damage can result in some risky plays that can easily lead to taking unnecessary hits yourself. This is one I actually kind of struggled with in terms of placement, because the Stalwart Shell Charm by itself is really nothing that spectacular. It's less than a half second added to your recovery time upon getting hit, and that bonus seems to be just enough to avoid some attacks, and in other situations, it lasts just long enough for you to get hit by something else you weren't even looking at when the time window closes on you again. Pairing it with Quick Focus can slightly heighten the window of time for a heal, and if you pair it with Quick Slash, the increased in vulnerability can actually give you enough time to safely wedge in another hit before needing to retreat. This is also an extremely valuable charm to have in later rounds in the Colosseum of Fools, where the enemies are as plentiful as there are particles in the air, and you could practically stand 10 feet away from your controller shooting at random buttons with a rubber band and still have a reasonable chance of killing something. In that case, the extra invulnerability comes in handy in a pinch, but that's about the only specific application I can think of, where I would prefer Stalwart this heavily. So drop that Stalwart shithead and pick yourself up a Shaman Stone, because extra invulnerability doesn't really matter when there's no one around to hit you. The Wayward Compass. Combined with Gathering Swarm, these two charms make up every new explorer's favorite pair of Hollow Knight trading wheels. It's the Tweedledee and Tweedledum of Hollow Knight loadouts. The yin and yang of Eastern religion, the if and then of computer science. Name a more iconic duo. I'll wait. Okay, yeah, Quick Slash and Mark of Pride is a pretty good duo. I just 
I, I don't know. I really didn't need these for nearly as long as I thought I was going to. I guess this is more a testament to how good the level design is than anything else, because the screens in certain areas become really recognizable very easily because of all the backtracking you'll likely be doing from area to area. I found myself checking the maps less and less around a couple hours in because I could just kind of look around for a couple seconds and instantly know where I was in relation to everything else. Like, oh, this is the area where I ran in and got my ass flattened by that giant club dude. That means I need to turn around and go somewhere else. As moments like these begin getting more and more commonplace, you just kind of start knowing where everything is, without needing to check a map or a compass or anything like that. Plus, with games like Hollow Knight, getting lost is kind of half the fun anyways. Gathering Swarm, same thing. Do you remember being seven and thinking quicksand and T-Rexes were going to be much bigger problems in your life than they are now? Well, that's the relationship I had with Gathering Swarm. I thought spending and hoarding your currency was going to benefit me greatly in the long run, because that only meant that much more resources I could buy to help me out. Four hours of playtime later, I've cleared out all the shops in Hollow Nest and Sly's mean mugging me because he thinks I'm coming back for more. These are the two okayest charms in Hollow Knight. I started ignoring these things not even halfway through the game, and I've never looked back. But newbie or veteran, if you do equip these charms every once in a while, I don't it, it's it's not really a move that people will look down upon you for. They aren't good. They aren't necessarily bad, either. Just like having a five-second conversation with your neighbor about the weather or somebody's dog. Just like making small talk with your barber about a topic you secretly couldn't be bothered to give a shit about. And just like my sense of humor on a good day, nothing impressive whatsoever. Not irredeemable, but not exactly anything to write home about. Perfectly average. Nothing more, nothing less. If you would like to do me a huge favor, like and subscribe if you haven't already. I can't even begin to explain looking at these numbers and just knowing that there's someone out there that's just as deranged as I am. Thanks for tuning into The Forge, I'm Rusty, and keep giving me ideas for these videos too, because the creative parts of my brain have been a dust bowl lately. Anyways, yeah, I will, uh, guess I'll see you next time. Piss.